So the first scenario, you need to set up an asynchronous data replication to another RDS database instance hosted in another AWS region. How can you achieve this? So the solution would be to set up asynchronous data replication to another RDS database instance in different AWS region. You can create a read replica. So this is important, the read replica. So this allows you to replicate your data from a primary RDS database instance to the replica, ensuring data redundancy and availability. In the next scenario, you require a parallel file system for hot, which means frequently accessed data. What AWS service can you use? So to address the need for a parallel file system for frequently accessed data, you can utilize Amazon FSx for leisure. It is a fully managed high performance file system optimized for workloads that require fast access to data. Hope you're getting my point. In the next scenario, you need to implement synchronous data replication across availability zone with automatic failover in Amazon RDS. What should you do? So to achieve synchronous data replication across availability zone with automatic failover in RDS, you can enable multi-AZ deployments. So two things you need to remember for synchronous replication, it is always multi-AZ deployment, whereas for the asynchronous replication, it is always read replica. So don't miss out on these two points. Now coming back to this scenario, this configuration, the multi-AZ deployment configuration, will automatically replicate your database synchronously to a standby instance in a different availability zone, ensuring high availability and automatic failover. So hope you are getting what I'm saying. In the next scenario, you require a storage service to host cold, which means infrequently accessed data, which AWS service can fulfill this requirement. So to host infrequently accessed data, you can leverage Amazon S3 Glacier, which is a low cost storage service designed for long term archiving and backup of data that is accessed very frequently or very less frequently. The next scenario, you need to set up a relational database with a disaster recovery plan having an RPO of one second and RTO of less than one minute. What should you use? To achieve a, re a relational database with a disaster recovery plan having an RPO of one second and RTO of less than one minute, which is you can utilize Amazon Aurora Global Database. So it provides low latency global replication, enabling rapid failover and ensuring minimal data loss. The next scenario, you want to monitor database metrics and receive email notifications when a specific threshold is breached. How can you accomplish this? To monitor database metrics and receive email notification for breached thresholds, you can create an SNS topic, which is simple notification service topic and add the topic in the CloudWatch alarm. So this will enable you to receive alerts via email when specific metric thresholds are crossed. So you need to set up DNS failover to a static website. How can you achieve this? This is the next scenario. So to achieve this one, to set up DNS failover to a static website, you can use Amazon Route 53, which is with a failover option basically. By configuring Route 53 to failover to a static S3 website bucket or CloudFront distribution, you can ensure high availability and automatic failover for your website. In the next scenario, you want to implement automated backup for all your EBS volumes, what should you do? So to implement automated backups for all your EBS volumes, you can use Amazon Data Lifecycle Manager. So this service allows you to automate the creation and retention of EBS snapshots based on 
कस्टमाइजेबल स्केड्यूल एंड लाइफ साइकिल पॉलिसी इन द नेक्स्ट सीनारियो यू नीड टू मॉनिटर दी अवेलेबल स्वैप स्पेस फॉर योर ईसी टू इंस्टेंसेस हाउ कैन यू मॉनिटर दिस मेट्रिक so to monitor the available swap instance or swap space for your ec2 instance you can install the cloudwatch agent and configure it to monitor the swap utilization metric so this enables you to track the swap space usage and take appropriate actions if necessary so in the first scenario you need to implement a fan out messaging system how can you achieve this so to implement a fan out messaging system you can create an sns topic you might be knowing what is sns that is simple notification service with a message filtering policy and configure multiple sqs that is simple queue service queues to subscribe so to subscribe to the topic so this will allow you to broadcast messages to multiple queues simultaneously in the next scenario you require a database with read replication latency of less than 1 second which aws service can fulfill this requirement so to achieve this solution or to achieve a database with a read replication latency of less than 1 second you can use amazon aurora with cross region replication aurora provides fast and efficient replication capabilities ensuring low latency for read operations across multiple regions in the next scenario you need to you need a specific type of load balancer that uses udp as a protocol for communication between clients and thousands of game servers worldwide which load balancer should you use to handle udp based communication between clients and game servers you can use the network load balancer so this load balancer supports tcp and also udp protocols making it ideal for managing the traffic between the clients and the game servers in the next scenario you want to monitor the memory and disk space utilization of an ec2 instance how can you achieve this so to monitor the memory and disk space utilization of an ec2 instance you can install the amazon cloudwatch agent on the instance so this agent collects system level metrics and sends them to the cloudwatch allowing you to monitor and analyze resource use utilization so i have made a complete video on this which is available on my channel you can check that out and it is a working solution the next scenario you need to retrieve a subset of data from a large csv file stored in an s3 bucket so what should you do so to retrieve a subset of data from a large csv file in an s3 bucket you can perform an s3 select operation based on the bucket's name and object's key so s3 select allows you to extract specific data from large objects reducing the amount of data transferred and improving performance at the same time in the next scenario you have to upload 1 terabyte of file to an s3 bucket how can you achieve this so the solution to this is to upload large files efficiently to an s3 bucket you can use amazon s3 multi part upload api so this api allows you to upload large objects in parts enabling parallel uploads and resumable transfer the next scenario you need to improve the performance of an application by reducing the response times from milliseconds to microseconds what service can help achieve this one so the best solution to achieve faster response times in microseconds range you can use amazon dynamo db accelerator which is also called as dax dax is an in memory caching service for dynamo db that significantly reduces database read latency and improves application performance in the next scenario you want to retrieve the instance id public keys and the private ip address of an ec2 instance how can you achieve this information so this is most widely asked questions even in the interviews 
so the best solution would be to retrieve the instance id public keys and public ip address of an ec2 instance you can use an url which is also called as magic ip address 169.254.169.254 slash latest slash metadata log into the ec2 instance type the url you will be able to see all the details i have made a separate video on this which is already available on my channel go check that out in the next scenario you need to route internet traffic to resource based on the location of the users how can you do this the best solution to route internet traffic based on user location you can use the route 53 geo location routing policy so this policy allows you to direct users to a specific resources based on their geographic location providing a localized experience the first scenario goes like this you need a cost effective solution for over provisioning of resources what should you do the best solution to this is to address the over provisioning of resources and ensure cost effectiveness you can configure a target tracking scaling in an auto scaling group which is also known as ASG this automatically adjusts the number of instances based on predefined metrics optimizing resource allocation and cost management the next scenario goes like this the application data is stored in a tape backup solution and the backup data must be preserved for up to 10 years how can you achieve this to preserve backup data for up to 10 years you can use aws storage gateway to backup the data directly to amazon s3 glacier deep archive this archival storage option provides long-term retention at a low cost the next scenario you need to accelerate the transfer of historical records from on-premises to aws over the internet in a cost effective manner how can you accomplish this one so the best solution to accelerate the transfer of historical records in a cost effective manner you can use aws data sync and select amazon s3 glacier deep archive as the destination data sync optimizes data transfer ensuring efficient and reliable migration to a long-term storage the next scenario you want to globally deliver static content and media files to customers around the world with low latency what is the recommended solution to globally deliver static contents and media files with a low latency you can store the files in an s3 bucket and create a cloud front distribution so this cloud front as a content delivery network caches content at edge locations worldwide ensuring fast and efficient delivery to end users i have made a separate video on this and the video is out on my channel please check that out the next scenario an application must be hosted on two ec2 instances and should continuously run for three years with stable and predictable cpu utilization what should you use so to host an application on two ec2 instances with stable and predictable cpu utilization for three year duration you can deploy the application to what is known as reserved instances reserved instances provide a cost effective option for long term and predictable workloads the next scenario you need to implement a cost effective solution for s3 objects that are accessed less frequently how can you achieve this one to implement a cost effective solution for s3 objects that are accessed less frequently you can create an s3 lifecycle policy to move the objects to s3 standard ia that is infrequent access so this standard IA storage provides a lower cost option for infrequently accessed data. The next scenario, you want to minimize data transfer cost between two EC2 instances. What steps should you take? 
to minimize data transfer cost between two EC2 instances, you can deploy the instances in the same region. So by keeping the instances in the same region, data transfer between them is typically not charged at all. The next scenario, you need to import the SSL or TLS certificate of an application. How can you import the certificate into AWS? To import the SSL or TLS certificate of an application into AWS, you can either use AWS Certificate Manager or upload the certificate to AWS IAM, that is Identity and Access Management. So these services allow you to manage and use SSL and TLS certificates for your applications. So that wraps up our discussion on common AWS exam scenario based questions and their solutions. Remember, you need to practice these scenarios and understand the appropriate solution to excel in your AWS exam. I hope you enjoyed learning along with me. Thank you all for watching. If you found this video helpful, Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned for more AWS exam tips and tricks. Until next time, happy learning. Bye bye.